down in Dudeville loved Cushmersh a lot. But the Grinch, who lived on the north side of Dudeville, did not. The Grinch hated Cushmersh the whole Cushmersh season. Now, don't ask me why. No one's ever told me the reason. It could be that his homegrown made his head feel too light. It could be that his ball packs were packed way too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his lungs were two sizes too small. <laughs> but whatever the reason that caused all his gloom, he stood there on Kushmersh Eve cursing those dudes. Staring out from his porch steps with a sour hay bale frown at the warm cracked windows all across their town. For he knew every dude down in Dudeville beneath was busy now trimming fresh elves with their teeth. And they're purchasing pounds, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Cushmarsh, it's practically here! Then he growled with his twit fingers nervously drumming. And for such a cheap hitter, this task was quite mind-numbing. For tomorrow he knew all the dude birds and blokes would bake bright and early, and they'd puff and they'd toke, and then they'd create ever so much smoke. Oh, that smoke on which the Grinch choked. Then the dudes young and old would all get the munchies, and they'd crunch and they'd chew, and they'd feast and they'd feast. They would feast on dude junk food after taking their hits, even without any dip. Those cheap chips were the shit. Then they do something he liked least of all every dude down in Dudeville, the tall and the small. They would cram in their closets with push push toot slamming, sit side by side, and those dudes would start clamming. They would huff, they would puff, they would smoke that shit up. And the more the Grinch thought of his dude Cushmersh day, the more the Grinch thought that he must find a way. The third Sunday in April is upon us by now. I must find a way to keep Cushmersh from coming. But how? Then the Grinch got an idea. A rancid idea. The Grinch got a Mershwiller Schwagerific idea. <laughs> I know just what to do! Well, the Grinch cleared his throat, <coughs> then he donned a quick holiday hat and a coat, then he chuckled and coughed. What a commercialized trick! With his cloak and his hat! I look like St. Chronic! All I need is a drug dog! The Grinch then looked around, but since canine are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No. The Grinch simply said, If I can't find a stash hound, guess I'll have to make one instead. So he called his chimp Cracks. Cracks! 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 Get over here! Come on! Come here! Yeah, boy! Come on! Get over here! Now! Cracks! Then when the chimp finally came, he took some hacky sack thread and tied a few socks to the top of his head. Next he loaded sandwich bags and old cigarette packs into his rusty old clunker and he strapped in old cracks. Then the greens turned the key and the tin can started up towards the homes of the dudes in a big, dirty puff. All their windows were dark, on their turf he now stood, the dudes still asleep clutching gats, bats, and planked wood. 
when he came to the first little crib in the hood. The first stab of the night, the old seedy bastard hissed, and he scaled to the roof, Ziploc bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney just like a chamber of glass. He took a huge breath out to fit his fat mass. He didn't get stuck now this part is true. Then he landed himself in the biggest of three rooms. Where the little dude pieces sat neatly in the rows. These devices, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he withered and stunk, coughed and coughed that would kill ya <coughs> around the whole room. He took all the paraphernalia, pop heads and tin foil, rolling papers, bongs, blunt wraps, bowl packs, bubblers, even sublime albums. He stuffed them in a bag, and the Grinch, very swift, stuffed the bag by itself in the trunk of his whip. There was skunk smell from the kitchen. He sensed the dude's stash. He took the dude's screens and he took the dude's cash. He searched those cabinets as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their brand new ring for their bubble dude hash. Then he stuffed all the bags in his hatchback with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch. Time to smoke a little tree. And the Grinch grabbed the green that he had been crotching when he heard a small sound as if someone had been watching. He turned around fast when he saw this small dude, the little Mandy Lou dude, who had just turned 22. The Grinch had been caught by this dude's foxy daughter who'd got out of bed for a change of bong water. She looked at the Grinch and said, Mr. Kush, where? Where have I Kush my streets gone, Kravik? Where? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick that he lied to that chick who he wanted to dick. By my sweet sack of pot, the fake smoky Kush lied. There's a lighter for this tree that won't light that I've tried. So I'm taking it back to my stash house, my dear. I'll roll a J back there. And we'll burn it back here. And his fib fooled the young lady. Then she gave him some head and he tossed her a fiver and sent her to bed. Then when Mandy Lou dude went to bed with her piece, he must rub one out later. Now to make with the tree. That's the last thing he took, the fat sack of fire. Then he went out the bathroom window, the old liar. On their tables, leaving nothing but ashes and a beetle lighter. And the one little seed that they left in the house was already cracked, and the insides were out. Then he did the same thing to the other dude's houses, leaving stems and seeds much too damaged for the dude's secret gardens. Twas a quarter past dawn, all the dudes in a sack ready to wait next to nothing where once bulls freshly set packed. But the Grinch had their parcels, the lighters, the small tastes of heaven, the snack bags and the bubblegum, the AZ and the resin. Twas three thousand feet out, the other side of the border, where he rode to the edge, then he opened a quarter. Let's see what they've got! He was grinchishly humming. They're finding out now that no Kushmersh is coming. <laughs> just waking, no baking, I know just what they'll do. Then his jaw dropped open when he saw what he took from the dudes. Why, this shit isn't brown, why, it's purple and blue. And that scent, sniffed the Grinch, that it simply must taste. So he rolled up a pinner and was instantly baked. And he didn't cough once while he blazed on that drow. It drew like a pencil. It's mad chronic, yo. And this buzz wasn't busted. Why, it was actually quite merry. It couldn't be so. Yes, this rap tastes of Barry. He stared down at Dudeville with his grinchy red eyes. Then he farted and felt a most shocking surprise. 
Every dude down in Doodville, the tall and the small, was sitting there passing one doom between them all. He hadn't stopped Cushmersh from coming. It came, even in this driest of seasons. But it wasn't the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch lips held tight to that drow, stood dazed and confused her with each passing blow. It came without hitters. It came without snacks. It came without cupies, ten spots, or nickel bags. It would seem like three hours he sat there and roasted as he watched what little other dudes had while he toasted. Maybe this Cushmersh, he thought, doesn't mean to burn a lot, but I guess it'd be better if we all smoked on this pot. And what happened next? Well, in Doodleville, they say that the Grinch's small lungs grew three sizes that day. And the minute his chest didn't feel quite so damn tight, he sat in their circle and blazed them up on mad lights. Yes, he brought back their fire. That's the green for their itch. And he, he himself, the Grinch, took the biggest. Also look for these fine titles wherever crap is sold.